All right, hi everyone. My name is Yaroslav. Uh, I'm taking a picture just for reference. Um, and uh, today, uh, this session is dedicated to building native mobile apps for SharePoint, or apps that interact with SharePoint. Uh, seems like a pretty good crowd. I guess all of you are developers, mostly. Anybody not a developer? You're in the wrong room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're welcome to stay. Um, it's not meant to be just like, uh, you know, um, 100% code session because you know um, I uh, I was I was new to building mobile apps for SharePoint uh, just uh, maybe four months ago so uh, that's why the session is uh, you know they usually say the best time to tell someone uh, how to do something is when you've just learned how to do something <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I will you know basically walk you through all the hurdles and everything that uh, it took me to figure this out. Because uh, it's not straightforward, as, as, as much as Microsoft's promoting mobile app development, um, and as much as there's as many as sample as there are online out there, 99% uh, of them don't work, uh, just because of the nature of the platform, right? The, uh, the iOS, the, the Google, Android platforms changing every day. It's a very dynamic type of environment in, in which these companies develop their, uh, their packages, their software, and Microsoft is trying to catch up. So some of the samples that you may find that are like, uh, six months old, uh, chances are you may need some tweaks. So, so this is the freshest and the latest uh, out there. So uh, it should be interesting. Our sponsors. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a, I've started SharePoint, I started as a web developer, became a SharePoint developer shortly after, and this is my 12th or 11th year, uh, almost 12th year of building solutions and architecting solutions for SharePoint. I wrote a few books, here they are. The latest one being the one that I'm giving giving away, um, and I also blog. Uh, I'll I'll provide links to my blog and Twitter, uh, and I'm sure if you if you Google my name, you'll find those as well. Um, so why why are we here, right? Are, are are all of you here involved in SharePoint development, or some of you have no idea about SharePoint? Everybody's a SharePoint developer, you would say. Okay, so why are we here? What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Everybody's happy, right? <laughs> That's typically not how it goes. Does your meeting ever look like this? <laughs> right? Or is it more like this? When, you know, ex except, you know, the phone is kind of like underneath the desk or someone's pretending they're not l really looking at the phone, but they're looking at the phone. Um, or like this, or like this, or this, or this. This is actually how my six o'clock scrum call happens every day. <laughs> this is how my meetings take place. Uh, I try not to fall asleep before I dial in. Uh, <laughs> it sometimes works. <laughs> so, uh, so the reality is that um, you know we're no long we're no lo not we're no longer just do work when we just open our computer. Right, like look even around, right? Maybe five years ago or so, everybody would have their laptop open, right? Uh, now people don't need to. Uh, in fact, about eight months ago or so, I went to the conference and in Chicago, Ignite conference, and I decided to leave my laptop in the hotel and I just brought my phone, and I was able to completely do everything that I needed to do over my using my phone, right? So the 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 world is changing, and. Uh, <laughs> And the thing is that it seems like the enterprise world uh, or a lot of corporations that are running uh, Microsoft SharePoint and SharePoint Online right now aren't really changing with it. We're still trying to sell uh, employee engagement, whatever that means. Uh, we're still, still trying to sell um, you know, collaboration, whatever that means. Uh, what does it really mean? Do we really collaborate just using a, you know, a laptop? Uh, or do we collaborate like these guys, you know? On, a, on an electrical pole, uh, trying to figure out what you need to do, what's the issue. Um, so the reality is that more and more, uh, there's, there's a lot more use cases that involve uh, mobile workers, and uh, these use cases range not just for information workers, th these use cases range from information workers to you know, people that work in the field that need to perform, you know, and take some measurements from, from the pressure valve or, or anything like that. So, uh, and, and these people usually, their main complaint is that 
they don't have, they can't bring rugged laptops with them. They have to write it down on a piece of paper, then go back to the office or hand in this piece of paper. Sometimes it gets lost, and uh, or or they need to go back to the office and start entering data. So there's a lot more use cases where um, you know these particular use cases use cases could be much more improved if um, these roles had access to a mobile technology. So our goal today is to show, or for me, to show you that um, it's not that difficult to create native mobile apps that use capabilities of your mobile devices, iOS or Android, uh, or Windows, or maybe not Windows, uh, no, kidding, <laughs> uh, and Windows uh, phone, um, to, to use full capabilities of features on that phone, things like camera, things like um, you know everything that comes with uh, geo tagging to actually uh, to actually do work and record it right into your SharePoint portal. So that's our goal today. Uh, we're going to be building a sam really simple app. Um, that app is going to do this. We're going to open up an app, and we're going to use a sample for that. And then you will have all the source code later for whatever we extend it. Uh, we're going to log into our Office 365 because I'm, I'm going to be using Office 365. Uh, for this particular demo. I'm going to accept the permissions to allow me to access my Office 365. I'm going to open a camera uh, on my phone, uh, take some incident pictures, and upload them to my SharePoint list. Pretty simple scenario, right? And hopefully, you know, whoever is in the receiving end is very happy that <laughs> <laughs> that, that now worked. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, uh, so it's a pretty simple scenario, but it covers a lot of different um, different kind of use cases in your organization. Because really, sh what is SharePoint? SharePoint is just a bunch of lists and libraries, right, and pages. Uh, and we've seen a lot, you know, responsive design and all that. Uh, but what about actually recording data into SharePoint? And from there, you can repre represent it however you want to do. So sh by giving you this simple example, I want to kind of show you that it's very simple to do something like that. And then you can extend it using your own uh, your own scenarios. So we're going to be using some tools um, for this demo. We're going to be using Office 365 Developer Site. If you don't have one, um, you can use this link to download it. We can uh, you can just Google uh, SharePoint Office 365 Developer Site or Office 365 Developer Site, and then it'll point you to exactly the same link. We're going to be using Windows Azure. Now you may be wondering why are we using Windows Azure? Because in order for your native app to log into Office 365, you have to use this as a middleman. So Windows Azure is a middleman for you to log into uh, from your native app to uh, Office 365. There's some other reasons why you want to use Azure to do things like push notifications, um, right? So SharePoint isn't a transactional system. Windows Azure is a middleman that will take care of communication between this and your device. Um, in a very kind of device-like manner. Um, so things like push notifications on your phone, those are little, you know, little notifications in the top. SharePoint can't do it on its own. Azure will, will help with it. Uh, we're not necessarily going to look at that because we only have 50 minutes or less, um, but that's, that's something to remember. Uh, and we're going to use Visual Studio and Xamarin. And when I started creating this deck about four weeks ago, Xamarin was just another... $900 per user. Now it's part of Microsoft, or I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Microsoft announced the deal to buy them, right? Whatever that means, whether that's going to be part of MSDN, maybe not. There's a lot of other products that are not part of MSDN that Microsoft acquired, so nobody knows what really is going to happen. But uh, it's now part of, uh, part of uh, you know, Microsoft acquired them. But what this truly means is means that uh, we're going to be using, uh, you know, we will have access to um, Pretty much the integration, you could assume, is going to be tighter between uh, Microsoft and what's possible within Xamarin. The support is going to be tighter. Because a lot of samples that I've downloaded for myself that claim to integrate with Office 365, like it just like I said, 90 and 95 percent of them failed. Uh, that's because these were two separate companies, I assume. So now, hopefully, that this is one organization, the feedback loop is going to be much, much quicker. Or the other way around. We'll see. Um, so these are the tools that we're going to be using. So what is Xamarin? And I kind of alluded to that already. Um, so w what are the benefits of that versus uh, using a native app? So when I started, when I started this journey of building a, a mobile app, and in this case for Android, 
uh, I used actual native app, uh, native um, Google Android Studio to build the, the mobile app. And it literally took me a few months to like compile something. Um, when I started, when I started up Xamarin, it uh, took me a day to compile something and, and deploy it. So, and that's, you know, considering the fact that I know Java. Uh, if you don't know Java, <laughs> Uh, or if you don't know Objective-C uh, for iOS, you're going to have a much big, bigger challenge. Because uh, with Xamarin, you can just use your .NET libraries and C-sharp to, to do work, and things just happen, right? And they get converted and deployed to your, to your native app, to, to your phone. Um, so uh, this link right here uh, gives you, this is actually a pretty good link because it gives you all of the samples that Xamarin had to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, this camera uh, camera app that I showed you just a second ago, that was basically uh, an app, a starter app that I started, and then I added things on the top of it. So uh, so there's a lot of different things that are already there. Um, and, and if you're not familiar with controls that particular uh, platform is using, you know, little lists and, and boxes and everything, uh, let's say on Android or iOS, uh, there's plenty of plenty of samples there that kind of show you, okay, this is how you use these whatever native lit boxes or stuff like that. Um, so very, uh, very good tool. And there's a 30, I think there's a 30 day trial. There is a 30 day trial. So I certainly recommend um, downloading and, and starting it up. So we're going to be using this sample. Um, the link's going to be available to you. I'll also provide a link on my blog to whatever we've extended from that. Uh, but the link to the, to the, the app to, to the camera app demo is, is this. The camera app demo, all it does for now is just opens the camera and you take a picture and it's stored in your device. So our goal is to take that picture now and upload it to Office 365 um, and create, you know, and add it to a list item and potentially add, add, add some additional metadata. Really, that's all our, that's, that's our goal. But this is what the app does right now, that sample app that we've, uh, that we've, um, uh, that we're going to download. Um, so I guess the best thing, so I have slides for this, but the best thing to do is uh, actually go ahead and uh, go ahead and start Visual Studio and open up a sample app and, um, and then go from there. So uh, obviously due to time limitations, I won't, uh, you know, I won't type in all the code from the, from the, from the, from the beginning, but I wanted to show you how to get started um, with this sample app. And then uh, what are the key moments to remember between this Azure integration and, and stuff like that? And, and then we give you the sample code so you can see for yourself the rest, right? Nobody needs to see me type, so. All right, so um, I'm gonna go and you know get started by opening Visual Studio. Uh, so Visual Studio, um, and I'm using 2015, uh, already comes with, um, already comes with templates for, for mobile. Uh, one thing that you may not know is that uh, these templates uh, will require um, will require Xamarin already installed. So Visual Studio will say, oh, create new project. What type of project? iOS, Android, no problem. But if you don't have <laughs> Xamarin installed, it'll, it'll just tell you, now download Xamarin. So even Visual Studio, uh, like before Xamarin and Microsoft Deal was announced, this was already kind of happening. So really Xamarin is the only kind of, for Microsoft is the only go-to, I guess, partner to, to go to and, and, and kind of for you to get started and build these apps. So we're gonna start and uh, build a brand new app. And um, it'll create all the framework just like everything usually does. Um, and So once this once this creates a project, in fact, rather than starting a brand new project, uh, what I'll do I will um, I will open that blank camera app demo and show you how you can integrate Office 365 actually start consuming Office 365 uh, services within that uh, within that app. But as you can see, if you create just brand new project, um, it right away says get started with Xamarin. Here's all of your uh, here's all of your um, of a project structure and go ahead and add all of these items. 
So the way that uh, Xamarin project is, uh, and in this case it's an Android app, the way it's built, it has just like, you know, a SharePoint project, it has uh, some of the um, um, resources for uh, building a layout and building the structure of your app. And, um, and, and then it has your main activity. Basically, it's the same thing as main.cs for like console app. So your main activity is basically launch this uh, as, soon as, your, as soon as your app launches. Um, so this particular, uh, under layout, under, uh, you know, we have or already existing kind of a initial file that was, was dropped. Uh, this is basically where you build your UI. So this is where, you know, this is the hello world application. That's where you add uh, tools, uh, you know, such as buttons and whatever else you want to have, really. Uh, text boxes, et cetera, et cetera. Just as regular Windows Forms development or web development, you add your, uh, you add your stuff to here. Um, so obviously, everything that's happening past that will be wired within your, uh, within your project here. So rather than do that, why don't we uh, close this and I'll open a sample. Um, so this is the app that I was talking about, right? Uh, you can get it, you can get the source code from uh, the GitHub and, uh, and basically, you know, we'll start extending from there. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I think I already have it This is going to take a few minutes. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank God for search. All right. So this is our sample project. Now, one thing I should mention is, uh, in order for you, when you install Xamarin, one thing that uh, is not uh, right away straightforward is that you will need to download some dependencies. So if you're developing Android apps, you will need to download Android Studio. And Xamarin will prompt you for all of that. It will actually download on your behalf. You don't have to Google anything and find things to start downloading. And if you're developing iOS apps, you will need uh, to uh, download uh, a tool set for that. And you will need to download the Java framework uh, as well. But Xamarin again is going to prompt you for all of the all of the things that you you need. It's just using that as a backend, so that's why you need to download all these things. So this code, the camera app demo that we have, is pretty pretty basic, right? Like uh, we are, uh, you know, we're init we're initializing some buttons. Uh, we make sure that we have place to store our pictures, and uh, you know, there's a there's sample to, to basically initialize the camera application on your phone and, uh, you know, take a picture and store it. It's a pretty basic application. Um, let's run it, I guess. One thing to, to also remember is it's really good if you actually have a native, if you actually have a phone rather than you use emulators, because that's, remember how I mentioned that it took me a day to compile something? Well, that's with using emulators. With using emulators, things really took uh, a long time um, because uh, of the version of a version of um, of the emulator that I was running wasn't compatible with sample and things like that. But when I was running it under, uh, you know, the actual uh, native device, it deployed with no problems. So if you have your device connected, uh, I'll figure out what this error is all about. Rather than troubleshooting it, I'm. Not sure why the out of the box uh, app now gives us this error. Rather than rather than troubleshooting and, and running it, what I'll do, I'll add, I'll integrate this app with the Office 365 and walk you through that step. And then we're going to use my already uh, built-in app, which was extended uh, exactly through the same sample um, to run it. To run it, um, it might be something simple that I'm missing, but right now while the, the clock is ticking, it's, um, it's tougher to troubleshoot. So um, one of the things that will come with your, uh, with your Visual Studio 2015 is uh, ability to automatically uh, connect 
um, to a service. Um, so one of the so ability to connect with the service automatically uh, allows you to add all the required DLLs uh, to to integrate with certain types of applications. So in this case, uh, you know, there's mobile services like the uh, the authentication. We're gonna um, integrate with this one, Office 365 APIs, and that will um, right away ensure that we have the right uh, set of DLLs added to the project right away. So in this case, I'm going to provide a domain of my Office 365 account. And that's my account. OK. Now, what is this? This is, um, remember when I mentioned that uh, in order for us to integrate or log in to Office 365, we need uh, Windows Azure in uh, integration. Um, this is, and we're going to go in particular screen on in, in Windows Azure, which is where I actually demonstrated that. Uh, but essentially, we're going to need to create an application inside Windows Azure. And then you, as a part of that application, we'll get an ID, which is just a GUID. And then uh, that's how your Office 365 will be linked to AD authentication by using that, a, uh, by using that GUID. So in this case, uh, we can either use an existing GUID that, that we have as a part of our application or have uh, Visual Studio generate this for us. So I'm going to say, Sure, create, create new AD application. And it created one. Now the next set of screens is, uh, is basically where you choose permissions that you need, right? So, so as part because we're integrating with an existing Office 365 service, uh, there's some things that Office 365 provides out of the box. And that's things like mail, contacts, uh, my files is actually OneDrive. Um, sites and users and, and groups. So we need to pick a certain set of permissions that are required to integrate with one or more uh, services. So in our case, if we just need, if we're just going to be writing uh, list items, we just need some essentially site permissions. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need contacts, mail, or anything else. Uh, but there are some basic permissions that we need, uh, and that's a permission to authenticate, obviously. Uh, so we need to, uh, we need to select that. So um, in this case, I'm going to say read and write items um, in all site collections. Now, one of the things that um, sign in and read your profile, uh, and then I'm going I'm going to click finish, and the whole process will start. The uh, you know all of the required DLLs and, and integration points will start added to this particular project. Um, now, one of the things that I wanted to mention, obviously we got some error, uh, which uh, I will go through in my PowerPoint to explain why this happened. Because um, if it was that simple, it would be too simple. Uh, <laughs> apart, from adding, apart from adding this particular integration, there's a couple of other things that you would need to add to successfully integrate with Office 365. But one of the things that I wanted to mention before I forget is that uh, remember these permissions that we were picking and saying, oh, give me this, you know, read and write to all site collections. Well, guess what? If your user, whoever is running uh, this app, consented to a permission that they actually don't have, then obviously they're not going to get that permission. So, um, so obviously they need to get a set of um, the permissions that you're requesting. You need to almost trust that your user will have these permissions. So be kind of judicious in terms of like, wh what, do you, what kind of permissions you're asking. Don't click all the boxes and say, yeah, just request everything. Because if, don't, if, if they don't have uh, access to user profile service, then they're not going to get access to a user profile service. And if your app doesn't handle that uh, gracefully, then you're going to get an error. And that's what happens a lot with a sample app that you're getting. Like, first thing, you're, first thing you, you do is like, sure, run the app, F5. Pointing it to the device, and then the app crashes, uh, and then you, you try to figure out what's going on. And it turns out the account that you used didn't have permissions to do all of the things that you wanted to do. Uh, as a developer, you're probably going to run as a site collection administrator, right? Or <laughs> but <laughs> once you have this deployed to a actual uh, a production system, that's when all the or, or at least some sort of a QA. Uh, that's when a lot of these things are going to come up. Um, so I'm going to switch to my PowerPoint because uh, it kind of captures some of the things that I uh, that I took a note of. 
Okay, okay, I think it's stabilized itself. Uh, so, so yeah, so to add the, to, to, to perform this integration, you don't need anything else except regular <coughs> Visual Studio uh, instance with the uh, office tools installed and with mobile tools installed. Uh, in this case, I'm using Enterprise, but you don't need the Enterprise version of Visual Studio. Um, you connect the service by right-clicking saying add a service. Uh, next, you're asked for a Office 365 developer site. Uh, you're going to get that site through a trial. And uh, then you would uh, request to create new AD application to perform the integration. We're going to back, go back into that in just a minute. Um, and then we pick our permissions. Again, there's a note here that uh, makes sure that you have that your users have permissions to what they have. Um, and then this obviously successfully completes <laughs> in this case. Uh, one thing that you'll notice, which I kind of, kind of find weird, is uh, <laughs> after this process is completed, this inflates your solution by 80 megabytes. So I'm not sure what kind of <laughs> DLLs Microsoft is adding and why, uh, but this, you know, this increases your project uh, by 80 megabytes from like a one megabyte sample project. Um, yeah, um, so, so some of these DLLs are uh, DLLs to work with uh, XML services and uh, um, with, with JSON objects, but yeah, there's a lot of different uh, packages that they're adding and it kind of adds uh, a lot of complexity. So now we're into, you know, a part where we're adding some code and uh, it's not a lot of code, uh, just a few lines here and there. <laughs> a few more lines. Um, so let's go and check out um, uh, to make this happen. So I'm going to... What am I... Sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to collapse everything, but somehow my shortcuts got messed. Um, so a couple of things that, uh, that were already here is are these methods to take a picture and to you know to see whether there's a camera application available on the phone? Um, I don't see why the camera application wouldn't be available on the phone unless you tempered with your phone, but uh, you know <laughs> anything's possible. <laughs> so anything's possible, right? Also, another thing is that this uh, uh, this deploys to a um, wh one of the things that y you should also keep in mind is that you don't know what kind of phone you're going to deploy this to when your app is in, let's say, Google Store or App Store, right, or, or iOS App Store. Um, you may deploy to a very old phone that doesn't have certain capabilities. So one of the things that you actually pick is um, in, in, your, in your property, in your um, solution properties right here, um, is, um, is your minimum requirements for, for the, for the um, platform that you're, that you're going to be deploying it to. Um, so, for instance, if I go to Android Options here, um, I need to specify, sorry, Android Manifest. I need to specify um, the type of access that I'm requesting here. So, for instance, uh, in here I would have a um, request. You see there's a lot of different types of options, but there's one that I'm, I'm going to request access to use a camera. There's also things like Bluetooth access and all sorts of, sorts of things that you need to you need to define. But also one of the other things that you need to specify is the minimum version that you're going to be, uh, that this, this app is going to be targeted to. Uh, because if you're, if you're deploying it to a, um, if, if, you're, if you're deploying it to the, the latest and greatest, then your app will not automatically show up in the app store for users that are bro browsing it from like, you know, a few versions down, right? But if you're deploying it to a very, old version, right, to SDK, let's say, level, uh, well, I don't know, like 15, I guess, is the minimum, uh, is what you're running a risk of is that you're not going to get all these fancy controls and, and tools that are available in, in, in the more recent version. So you kind of have to strike a balance between what do you really need? Are you deploying it to, you know, if you, if, if you know what your target audience is, then you kind of, the uh, decision is easier to make. But also that decision will need to kind of be a compromise between are you deploying it to the latest devices, then you may not have your app available for older devices. If you're only available, if you're making it available on older devices, then you may not be able to use all the fancy controls that are available on new devices. Hopefully that confused you. So, 
I meant to. <laughs> so, um, uh, no, but that kind of makes sense, right? Like, older DLLs will not give you the latest and greatest. So, so what are the things that I've added on the top of this? Well, there is these two methods, and I'll delve into them in just a moment. Um, there is this authentication helper that uh, class that I've that I've downloaded, and that authentication you'll notice some things are hard coded here, um, and uh, obviously some of them are okay to hard code, some of them aren't. I'll let you know which one, which one ones are okay. Um, so this, for instance, authentication ha uh, helper will. Um, will perform a task of getting authentication token from Azure. So when your application is launched at first, um, you know, and you need to log into your Office 365 account, uh, you will log into Windows Azure and obtain a token. Now you can use that token uh, to communicate with SharePoint Online. So um, essentially what this, what this function will do is obtain a token for you. We'll, we'll proxy authentication, and then obtain a token. If you didn't get a token, that means you're not authenticated. If you got a token, that means you're all good. And that token will have all of your you know, permissions that you have and all the good information in order to communicate with Office 365 um, with that particular tenant. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is there's these two things that are, that are hard-coded. Um, this is our application ID, and I'll show you in Windows Azure where, where you get that application ID. And this is just a URI in case you have more than one application running, and it's unique identifier. Uh, we're not unique identifier, it's a URI to this thing in multiple applications. Um, so that's my authentication helper. It's very simple, there's nothing else there. Uh, now, my main class where I've been, uh, we're using that authentication uh, helper to now log in and get our token. So this is where our token is going to be stored, and we're going to use that token to perform transactions such as reading and writing things from, the from SharePoint lists. Um, so very simple code. One of the things you'll notice, there's this a lot of this await uh, in, in, this, in this code. There's going to be a lot of await. Uh, the reason why is because um, on a device, you, you need to run pretty much everything in asynchronous mode because you don't want to freeze up your phone uh, while it's waiting to authenticate, right? That may be okay in a web development, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, so it's not okay in the uh, you know in the scenario where you're on your phone, right? Users want to be able to flick between apps. It's not and okay. It's not okay <laughs> at all. Okay, that's great. I'm glad you agree. Uh, in web, yeah, I mean it's you know, but typically in web development, we're used to like, sure, let's just you know, spinner is spinning. Sure, let's wait. And here it's kind of like. Uh, Less, less okay. So we're waiting for authentication token, uh, and then and then we're we're obtaining it. And you know, in in my case, you will see that um, I don't store anywhere authentication token. Um, and when you see the app, the UI is pretty simple, and um, you know you just kind of um, you just kind of click a log login button. You enter your credentials. And then you perform functions. As soon as you close your application, it's gone. You have to re-log in again next time. So obviously, in your production application, you want to put it in settings somewhere and save your authentication token, so people aren't asked to log in every time they <laughs> they need to they open the app, right? It kind of is straightforward, uh, but um, that's just something to remember. Um, so that's my login uh, function. Now, after I logged in. Um, I'm gonna, um, so I'm gonna, I'm basically gonna wait for the result in my, uh, in my, you know, main activity that's gonna be, uh, that's responsible for uh, running the application in the, uh, um, for, for, in ru running the application. And then in here, there's these two methods here. One of them is add list item, right? Pretty straightforward. And if you've been doing uh, SharePoint API development, this is probably like no news for you, right? You just use your API calls or REST calls and pass parameters to them. And then, you know, in this case, we're, we're recording, uh, we're calling, we're getting hold of this quick little list, test list. And that's an example of the hard coded thing that you may want to kind of uh, allow a user to, to specify. But we're getting hold of the, uh, uh, this test list. And then we are uh, passing 
we're we're creating a new uh, we're creating basically basically a new request to a uh, to provision or to add a new list item with uh, with a title, and um, we're adding an attachment. And where do we get the attachment? We get the attachment from um, the file uh, the file path, and in this case. The file path has been passed to us, but basically it's a file that's been taken by a camera app and stored in a file system, in a local file system on your phone. <laughs> um, um, so pretty, um, pretty straightforward set of instructions, really. As soon as we get a hold of the, uh, um, as soon as we get the results back, uh, as soon as our list item is created, uh, we attach a file, and then, and then basically upload it as a regular binary stream. So one of the things is uh, uh, for one of the things to mention here for for the list items is that uh, if you are attaching an attachment to a list item, you need to first create a list item. So that's why there is a little bit of an extra code here uh, that uh, we're not just uploading a file to the docking library and adding all of the metadata, but first creating a list item, populating the metadata, and then attaching the file to it. Um, however, one of the things that we're going to need. Uh, one of the things for that's required for this to successfully uh, complete is that we need to get the form digest. Uh, and form digest is required for all of the update operations. So this um, essentially uh, uh, helper function here gets the form digest and uh, passes it on to uh, our um, um, into, into our add list item before we actually create list item. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, run this, and uh, we'll see how it works in action. So first, before we run, uh, before we run this, I wanted to show you. Here's my test list. That ha already has an item here. So who's a volunteer? By the way, this is the time to volunteer. Volunteer for the demo. Who wants to be a volunteer? Okay, you're going to be the volunteer. Both of you. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to. Uh, okay, you can see. It. Okay, good. So it's now not as duplicated. So this is my phone. I'm going to deploy uh, this app or run this app. And hopefully it learns this time. Sorry, guys, about the previous one. It's just one of the things is these live demos is that. Oops, is these things are unpredictable sometimes. So it's compiling right now and deploying it to my phone. One of the good things that you will uh, notice is that you can debug here just like you would debug any other code. So if I put a breakpoint here, you can put a breakpoint and you know run um, <coughs> and then and debug the values that that are uh, as as the app is being executed. All right, so I'm going to log in to my Office 365. Did it work? It did. I'm going to sign in. Now it asks me for consent. It's going to read and write items in all site collections and read my profile. I say sure. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna open a camera app. Where's my volunteer? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I captured you in the background as well. <laughs> We're not gonna use it for any commercial purposes, so no worries. <laughs> I'm gonna click OK. <laughs> and uh, it's still. Why isn't it? Okay, it's a little bit delayed because already here is already showing it. Okay, and then it automatically uploads it to my Office 365. So let me show you this. And this should be there should be another item created just a second ago. And it is created. I'm gonna open it. There isn't many. There isn't much metadata attached to it, but you can attach as much stuff as you want. And then there is a picture that we've just taken. So there you go. But wait, there's more. 
<laughs> so there's a little bit more. So uh, so obviously from here, um, you can take it. Um, you know, you can take as as much as as far as as much further as you want, right? You can add because now it's in SharePoint, and you can add fancy things as you know your incident reminders here on your dashboard somewhere uh, that will. So, so now your data is in SharePoint. You have integrated successfully, and you've taken it from the field, and you have put it into the into the people's desks or you know people that are or, or business users' hands. Um, so, so yeah. So that's one thing that I wanted to show you. But also another thing that I wanted to quickly kind of jump to, uh, because if I give you the source code, um, it will require this component, the Windows Azure thing. And I wanted to kind of show you how to configure it because everything else will work. Um, if you have a developer account, if you have, if you change the the URL to your developer account, you change from my my account to yours, uh, that will work. The only thing that you will need to set up is this. So I wanted to show you that real quick uh, while we have some time. So in Windows Azure, by the way, if you don't have a Windows Azure, there is again free free trial. Um, but uh, if you do have Windows Azure, and if you have MSDN subscription, you may already have Windows Azure as part of it. But one of the things that you will get in the most basic Windows Azure ever is this Active Directory, um, uh, Windows Azure Active Directory. So if you go to Windows Azure Active Directory, uh, you, you need to create new Active Directory. In my case, I already have one. Um, and then we're gonna go to Applications. And in this case, we're going to create new application, but I already have my camera upload demo. And the reason why I have my camera upload demo is um, when you when when we do a connected service and go through this wizard. Remember when it was asking me for client ID, et cetera, et cetera. It already provisions it because it asks you to sign in to Windows Azure. It already also provisions your cam uh, your your project, so to speak, or your application into here. So. Uh, I'm going to go into my existing one. And here's when I click configure on the top here. Here's, here's the uh, client ID that you will need to take down and put into your application under, um, under your authentication helper right here. Also, you will need to take down this redirect URI and put it here. So these are two things that you need to do. And of course, you'll notice on the login screen, we, we had just a plain logo. You can put your own logo. Um, and in here, you define permissions, re requested permissions for the application. So in this case, this wizard, again, the same wizard that we've gone through, this wizard will automatically go and make these changes. But this is also when you can, where you can toggle it, uh, you know, what kind of permissions the user is going to have. And again, just keep in mind that just because you've requested these permissions doesn't automatically mean that users are going to get these permissions. I don't have permissions to write to a list, um, then I won't get, you know, it'll fail, right? So uh, this is just asking you whether you have a consent, um, you know, showing a consent screen. So, so that's pretty much it. Let's see if I have uh, anything else um, on this topic just to make sure that I didn't skip anything. Well, you, you will have access to this presentation, so that's good. I did include some some of this code, obviously. You can't read anything, but this is, <laughs> this is in case you don't have a solution and you want to just follow and copy and paste. Uh, but, and there are some additional steps on how to uh, integrate uh, additional packages to, pro uh, to process your jQuery. Um, Okay, this is authentication, and this is basically our demo app. This is the Azure integration that we've gone through. And this kind of explains the process of issuing the tokens. Uh, you know, Windows Azure connects to a, um, uh, sorry, your app connects to Windows Azure, uh, gets the token, uh, token is uh, sent to the app, the app uh, connects again to find out what are the services available, if you have access to mail, uh, OneDrive, sites, and then um, gets the list of these tokens and starts interacting with Office 365 based on information that was provided. Any questions?